Hello, and welcome back to the top quadrant. In this video we're going to focus on how to choose an ETF. ETFs, or exchange traded funds, are a popular investment option for many investors because of their low fees, diversification, and ease of use. However, with so many ETFs available, it can be overwhelming to choose the right one for your investment goals. In this video, we'll go over the factors you should consider when selecting an ETF to invest in. Before we dive into the factors to consider when selecting an ETF, let's first review what an ETF is and how it works. An ETF is a type of investment fund that is traded on a stock exchange, similar to a stock. ETFs are made up of a basket of securities, such as stocks or bonds, and aim to track the performance of a particular index, sector, or asset class. For example, you can buy an ETF that tracks the S&P 500, which is an index of 500 large-cap stocks listed in the US. ETFs are popular among investors because they provide diversification, which can help reduce risk. By investing in an ETF that tracks an index or sector, you can gain exposure to a broad range of securities with just one investment. Additionally, ETFs typically have lower fees than mutual funds, which can eat into your returns over time. Now that we understand what ETFs are, let's go over the factors to consider when selecting an ETF to invest in. Expense Ratio The expense ratio is the annual fee that the ETF charges for managing the fund. It's important to pay attention to the expense ratio because it can have a significant impact on your returns over time. For example, if you invest $10,000 in an ETF with a 1% expense ratio and it earns a 7% return, you'll have $18,196 after 20 years. However, if you invest in an ETF with a 0.25% expense ratio, you'll have $22,261 after 20 years. Index Tracking ETFs are designed to track a particular index or asset class, so it's important to make sure that the ETF is doing a good job of tracking its benchmark. One way to check this is by comparing the ETF's performance to the performance of its benchmark over a certain period of time. If the ETF consistently underperforms its benchmark, it may be a sign that the ETF isn't tracking the index effectively. Liquidity Liquidity refers to how easy it is to buy and sell shares of the ETF. It's important to choose an ETF that has good liquidity, especially if you plan on trading the ETF frequently. One way to measure liquidity is by looking at the ETF's average daily trading volume. Generally, ETFs with higher trading volume are more liquid. Holdings it's important to look at the ETF's holdings to make sure that it aligns with your investment goals and risk tolerance. For example, if you're looking for a low-risk investment, you may want to look for an ETF that holds mostly bonds. If you're looking for a high-risk investment, you may want to look for an ETF that holds mostly stocks. Diversification as we mentioned earlier, one of the benefits of ETFs is that they provide diversification. However, it's important to make sure that the ETF you choose is sufficiently diversified. For example, if you invest in an ETF that tracks the S&P 500, you'll have exposure to 500 different large-cap stocks. 
But if all those stocks are in the same sector or industry, you may not be as diversified as you think. Make sure to review the ETF's holdings and see how diversified they are across different sectors and industries. Performance While past performance is not a guarantee of future results, it's still important to review an ETF's performance over time. Look at the ETF's historical returns and compare them to its benchmark and other similar ETFs. Keep in mind that some ETFs may have more volatility than others, so it's important to understand your risk tolerance and investment goals. Size and age. Finally, it's important to consider the size and age of the ETF. ETFs with larger assets under management (OM) may have lower expense ratios and better liquidity. Similarly, ETFs that have been around for longer may have a more established track record and history of tracking their benchmark effectively. Now that we've gone over the factors to consider when selecting an ETF, let's look at some real-life examples to help illustrate these concepts. Example 1. SPDR S&P 500 ETF, SPY The SPDR S&P 500 ETF, SPY, is one of the most popular ETFs that tracks the S&P 500 index. It has an expense ratio of 0.09%, which is relatively low compared to other ETFs. Its liquidity is also high with an average daily trading volume of over 78 million shares. However, because the S&P 500 is a large cap index, the SPY may not be as diversified across sectors and industries as some investors would like. Example 2, Ishares Core US, the aggregate bond ETF, AG, of the Ishares Core US. Aggregate Bond ETF, AG, is an ETF that tracks the Bloomberg Barclays US Aggregate Bond Index. It has an expense ratio of 0.05%, which is low for a bond ETF. Its holdings are mostly made up of high-quality bonds, which makes it a good option for investors looking for a low-risk investment. However, because it tracks a bond index, its returns may not be as high as some investors would like. Example 3, Invesco QQQ Trust, QQQ, the Invesco QQQ Trust, QQQ, is an ETF that tracks the Nasdaq 100 index, which is made up of 100 large cap tech companies. It has an expense ratio of 0.2%, which is higher than some other ETFs, but its performance has been strong over the past few years. Its holdings are heavily concentrated in the tech sector, which may not be suitable for all investors. Choosing the right ETF can be a daunting task, but by considering the factors we've discussed, you can make a more informed decision. Remember to look at the expense ratio, index tracking, liquidity, holdings, diversification, performance, and size and age of the ETF. By doing your research and understanding your investment goals and risk tolerance, you can find an ETF that aligns with your needs.